Hi, I'm Manu Ramraj from um, KetchP Cloud Operations, and I'll be presenting what's in your toolbox. What are the categories of tooling that are essential to deploy an OpenStack cloud? Um, my co-conspirator in putting this together is Steve Pearson, also from HP. So today we're going to be talking about different categories of tools that are interest to us in, in operations, uh, to the operators that are actually setting up these OpenStack clouds. Um, the, you really need these categories of tools only if you're doing things at scale. Um, things are different if you're doing, say, 10 nodes. You could, um, you could do pretty much all of the functions that I'm going to talk about manually. Um, if you're doing 100 nodes, then, then you better invest in some of this tooling and automation. And if you're doing thousands of nodes, yes, you definitely need these. So what are the categories that we're going to talk about today? Um, we start off with hardware prep and inventory management. And by this, I mean the processes of taking your newly shipped hardware and installing and upgrading the firmware on it, um, configuring BIOS, RAID, setting it up in a way that it's compliant with the services that you're going to run on top of it. And it also involves the process of discovering your assets and um, making sure you have the proper tracking mechanisms and asset tracking mechanisms built in there. Next comes your system provisioning, which is basically uh, putting out a base OS on those newly arrived um, gear. Uh, next is config management, which is um, which in the case of OpenStack, it would be about what are the services you're deploying and what sort of configuration goes along with those services. For example, um, in the case of Swift, it would be what's the ring file configuration. Um, then there's um, network configuration, which is basically setting up the VLANs, um, typically for your services. Um, and then orchestration, which is the process of automating and orchestrating all these um, above functions. Hardware prep and um, inventory management. Again, I'm going to put out a disclaimer that I'm going to be talking about a couple of tools and services, but again, um, doesn't mean that that list here is in any ways exhaustive. Everybody um, and every vendor has got their own version of these tools, and this is just an illustration of the category of tools that you need. So with that, I'll start it off with what would you use for hardware prep? Um, today, on the public cloud side in HP, we use a tool um, um, internally code um, codenamed as Blacksmith. And it's basically got a tight integration with some of the, um, the HP hardware config utilities. And uh, because we've been using it over the years in operations, we've built several safeties into this tool, including tracking ownership and making sure we have approval workflows. Um, so if a machine in production is being taken out, and then um, if you're reinstalling, making sure the right people are consulted and approval is taken before you go back and do any of the firmware upgrades, for example. And, um, it's also got functionality in there to discover new nodes as they're brought on to the network and booted. And it's in, it integrates with your physical inventory management system, so it's got that view as well in terms of knowing where the hardware is actually located in the data center. And I'll show you a pictorial representation of that coming up. Then there's Ironic. Um, it's a core OpenStack service. It's also included in our Helion distro. And it's highly extensible, can be run standalone, has a well-defined API, and UI, um, so again, something that's highly recommended for hardware prep. Um, we also have um, in HP our um, server um, groups, the server divisions that have a tool named OneView, and it's the, um, it's the de facto tool recommended by HP, uh, especially if you're configuring Blade kind of hardware, and it's really great in that it can also do your network configuration for you um, using Virtual Connect if you're using Blades. And it's got three par and storage and SAN support. And it comes with an API and a UI. Um, there are n number of these tools available. Uh, but uh, the point here is that you will need at least one tool from this category. And you'll need to do that before you go ahead with your OpenStack install. Um, this is, again, an illustrative view of how we do inventory management. We've, um, this is our tool, uh, which, which helps us collect the inventory data. Um, we've, come up with a bunch of horizon panels. You can see a data center view with different tiles in the data center and the racks in the data center and the nodes in there. And then you can um, drill down even further into what's running on each node. Um, but basically, you need this kind of information about your hardware to make the right choices about deploying stuff. 
Um, this is a view from, this is a screenshot from the OneView tool, and it shows a server profile on the left-hand side, and you see that the server profile is being applied to a, a particular node, and you see that it's in progress. Okay, so we're moving on to the next step. You've got your hardware prepped, you've got all your firmware, RAID, and BIOS configured. Now it's on to configuring your base OS. And again, um, the, the list of options here is pretty huge, um, and I'm, I'm just going to present a small selection. Um, there's Blacksmith that we use internally. Um, it, 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 it's, um, Blacksmith's got the functionality to basically put in any Debian um, derivative, um, put the base OS out there, base Linux OS out there, and it, can, it also does, um, it takes the node after it's, after it's got the base OS and integrates it with configuration management. Then there's Ironic, which is image-based, and cloud init, um, cloud init functionality is actually emerging as a really cool way to customize images post deployments. And Ironic is used in conjunction with Triple O uh, in, in most of the use cases here. There's Foreman, um, again, it's got a nice integration with um, configuration management tooling. And there are other HP tools and non HP tools out there. Um, again, you will need at least one tool in this category to serve this purpose. Uh, this is um, a screenshot from HP's um, hardware management to utility um, inside control. Again, it can be used for putting a base OS on machines. On to the next step, which is your configuration management. Um, in HP, um, especially on the operations side, we do a lot of stuff with Chef. Um, it's, um, and we've actually come up with our own cookbooks just because of historical reasons. We started doing that before some of the... Um, some, some of the more publicly available cookbooks today were available. Um, Chef is really good in that it supports versioned cookbooks, and that's been really useful for us. Um, but it doesn't support versioning of the roles or the data bags, and, um, and to, to be able to segregate our different environments, uh, we've actually come up with a, um, with a usage of the Chef orgs, and we use the Chef orgs basically to orchestrate our deployments and to make sure we can do rolling deployments and don't have to do one big bang approach. We also use a combination of, of Jenkins and Chef to do all the, um, the orchestration around this. And uh, this process is relatively straightforward. And um, there are still some tasks around this that are performed manually. For example, a migration of custom VMs before you go ahead and do an upgrade is still a manual process. And uh, we are constantly striving to add more automation in this space. Um, there are, as I mentioned, in every category, you're going to find other options. There's, you could use Puppet, you could use Ansible, you could use Salt, um, ConfD, uh, which is emerging as a container um, in the container space. Uh, but you'll need at least a tool um, if you're going to do something at scale uh, for managing um, your services. On to the network configuration piece. Um, and the category of tools in here. Um, typically, we've observed that um, on the network config side, uh, we spend a lot of time in design, but once you've designed a data center or designed a cluster, um, then, then the changes are pretty minimal. Um, um, so a lot of the stuff is actually today done pretty manually, um, but we are investing in, in self-service tools that would enable people to make small changes, for example, um, to add a node to a load balancer. Um, so we have a load balancer self-service tool. Um, Ansible, uh, we're also trying to orchestrate a lot of the, um, the network automation, especially around configuring VLANs using Ansible. And Ironic itself can be used in the space with the Ironic Neutron plugin. And uh, we've had some success with experimenting with this. Um, and then HP OneView, as already mentioned, has really good um, network automation also, um, if, especially if blades are being used. On to the, um, um, to the final step, which is the orchestration piece, um, before you go ahead and actually do your deploys. Um, again, Ansible can be used for the orchestration. And by orchestration, what I mean here is do service A before you do service B, before you do service C. So basically orchestrating your entire OpenStack um, deploy that way and the dependencies. Um, again, um, uh, based on our experimentation and our usage, we found that Ansible is actually really suited to this purpose uh, more than Chef or Puppet based on our experimentation. And Rackspace has actually come out and contributed um, a lot of Ansible playbooks as well. 
Um, we also have other software tools in, from HP Software around orchestration, um, um, operations orchestration is, is a tool in this space. Um, again, this can, this uh, in operations orchestration in conjunction with cloud service or, um, CSA or cloud service automation can be used to basically model your entire cluster and orchestrate and roll, roll it out. And this would be your entire OpenStack um, um, cloud. Um, um, and we see more um, efforts emerging in this space um, as we get into uh, more advanced flows, not only in the deploys, but also in auto remediation and um, capacity <laughs> management. All right, to recap, um, we've talked about um, the several categories of tools and the several steps that you have to do before you actually get your infrastructure ready to deploy OpenStack. Um, so we've talked about the hardware preconditioning, uh, the network uh, pieces, um, we've talked about um, the inventory management, and then and tying it all together with orchestration. Um, again, feel free to pick your favorite tools in these space, but if you're doing things at scale, we would strongly recommend that you pick a tool for each one of those categories. Thank you, thanks for watching.